A College of DuPage trustee resigns. COD celebrates Black History Month and kick off the weekend on campus with some music. All that and much more on this edition of Courier TV News. Hello and thank you for joining us. I'm CJ Rosenstein. A Downers Grove North High School student has died from injuries sustained after being hit by a car in front of the school. On the morning of February 19th, 17-year-old Elizabeth Dunlap was crossing the street in front of her high school, Downers Grove North, when she was struck by a car driven by Joseph Kurchuski of Naperville. Kurchuski had a blood alcohol content of 0.3 and was coming off of what has been described as a four-day cocaine bender. Dunlap died from her injuries three days later. Kurchuski was charged with one count felony aggravated DUI and one count felony reckless homicide. His bond was originally set at $5 million, but was later reduced to $750,000. Kurchuski is eligible for up to 3 to 14 years in the Illinois Department of Corrections if found guilty. Beth Dunlap was a junior and played on the Downers Grove North High School varsity volleyball team. Her family has set up the Beth Dunlap 18 Fund and donations can be made at any Chase Bank. 18 was her volleyball uniform number. The goal of the fund will be to accomplish 18 acts of kindness annually in the volleyball community to assist underprivileged youth volleyball students and enjoy the game. Beth Dumlap will be laid to rest this Saturday. The College of DuPage Board of Trustees says, says goodbye to their chairman. Manny Lopez is in the newsroom with the details. Laying the groundwork for a smooth transition following her election to the Illinois House of Representatives, College of DuPage trustee Deanne Mizaki resigned on January 17th as board chairman. Mizaki will continue to serve as a trustee for the immediate future, but Vice Chairman Frank Napolitano will fill in as board chairman until the board holds a reorganizational meeting planned for April or May of this year. Hi. Um, I just wanted to say, you know, my, my family's first COD experience uh, came through my mother. And she swears that John Belushi was in one of her classes. And because she's my mother, I believe her. Um, she truly did live the Chaparral lifestyle, attending classes in makeshift locations on Roosevelt Road, some of which we uh, saw uh, didn't even exist in the facilities master plan even today. Mizaki was elected to the College of DuPage board in April of 2015 and was first elected chair in December of that year. She was also re-elected to the position in 2016 2017 and 2018. Mizaki, an Elmhurst resident, was chosen to fill the state representative seat left vacant by the departure of Patty Bellock in July of 2018 and was elected to the seat this past November. Chairman Frank Napolitano applauded Mizaki for her leadership and insight over the last four years. Following Mizaki's resignation, board members named Heidi Holen of Glen Ellen to fill her vacancy. Poland will be sworn in at the board's Dr. March meeting and will be will completing Mizaki's term, which ends in 2021. We wish Deanne Mizaki the best in her role as state representative. I'm Manny Lopez, back to you at the news desk. Thanks again, Manny. And remember, for all college news and events, log on to The Courier. The college wrapped up its Black History Month celebrations today with its year-closing ceremony. We're on the scene to check out the festivities. The College of DuPage celebrated Black History Month in grand fashion this year. The opening ceremony kicked things off with a performance from the African Dance and Music Institute as well as the College of DuPage Chamber Singers. The event also featured speeches from University President Dr. Brian Caputo and Manager for Student Diversity and Inclusion David Swope. Well first of all I think what we have to do is take time to be aware of who we are and to be our better selves we have to engage in learning. The co-presidents of the Black Student Alliance, Taria Murphy and Jamon Lewis, gave speeches as well as foreign exchange student Evelyn Yangston. As we start Black History Month again, let's be ready to celebrate the accomplishments and achievements for black people in the past, present, and future. Let us use this month to remind ourselves and the world around us just how beautiful being black is. Because being black is something to be proud of 24-7, 365. The events were focused around the theme of black migration. WDCB station manager Daniel Bindert explored how that sentiment was expressed through music. A lot of the, the songs about the Great Migration are aspirational songs. It's about people wanting to leave home, to, to travel, to escape. It's, it's about the travel and the journey. The annual African American Read-In featured students, staff, and volunteers sharing selected passages from African American writers. 
Dr. Frederick Douglass Dixon challenged the idea of black migration with a rousing lecture. Imagine what that does when we talk about the word migration. Does it fit? We're going to still challenge it. But think about if migration and what we know migration says out of some dictionary, does it fit? The month of learning ended with a performance by the Indica Reggae Band. So if you love reggae music, say yeah, man. Yeah. <laughs> For more information on events and activities during Black History Month at the college, contact the Center for Student Diversity and Inclusion at swope28 at cod.edu or contact 630-942-2565. Illinois workers making minimum wage will get a raise next year. Illinois Governor J.B. Pritzker signed into law an increase to the state's minimum wage Tuesday. Under the new law, the minimum wage for the state will rise from $8.25 to $9.25 an hour on January 1st of next year. In July, it then jumps again to $10 an hour. After that, the minimum wage will go up $1 per hour each year until it hits $15 an hour in 2025. Nine long years, there were many forces that were arrayed against giving a raise to the people. From the Illinois EPA shutdown to a major race in Illinois and the end of an era for a popular shoe store, here is your Community Roundup. A federal judge ruled against Sterigenics reopening its facility in Willowbrook. The medical supply sterilization company was shut down on February 15th by the Illinois Environmental Protection Agency. This comes after high ethanol oxide readings in recent tests at the Willowbrook plant. Ethanol oxide is a known carcinogen. Tests found that levels of the chemical to be 350 times higher than EPA deems as an acceptable risk. The lawyer of Sterigenics argued that they are operating in full compliance to the rules and regulations issued by the Illinois EPA. The race for Chicago's mayor will be decided in a runoff election between Lori Lightfoot and Tony Preckwinkle. Out of 14 candidates, Lightfoot and former federal prosecutor received 17.45% of the total vote. Preckwinkle, president of the Cook County Board and chairwoman of the county's Democratic Party, received 16.06% of the vote. This sets Chicago to have its first African-American woman mayor. Lightfoot, if elected, would also be the first openly gay mayor of the city. The runoff election will be on April 2nd to decide who will replace Rahm Emanuel. And remember, on Tuesday, April 2nd, CNTV will be bringing you election coverage throughout the day on our Facebook page. We will have analysis, candidate reactions, and local, state, and national coverage. CNTV Election Coverage 2019 will be available on our Facebook page at Courier TV and our website, codcourier.org. After 62 years of business, Payless Shoe Source is closing its doors after filing for bankruptcy on February 14th. The discount shoe sale company will be shutting down all 2,100 stores in the United States. The company has already closed its online sales. The store closings should conclude by the end of May. Early voting for the April 2nd consolidated election has begun in DuPage County. You can now vote at the DuPage County Government Campus in Wheaton, room 1-600. To register to vote, two forms of identification are needed, with at least one form displaying your current residential address. Also, if any resident has changed their name or address, they may update their voter's registration by Tuesday, March 5th. Current registered voters may apply for a vote-by-mail ballot through March 28th. To be valid, a completed vote-by-mail ballot must be postmarked earlier, but not later than midnight on Tuesday, April 2nd. On campus, online elections for the COD Student Leadership Council will take place on Wednesday, March 13th and Thursday, March 14th. Everyone enrolled in classes this semester will be able to vote for student trustee, student body president, and student body vice president. These positions take part in the college decision-making process and are called on by the administration to represent the students. If you'd like to check out who is running, you can go to the Student Leadership Forum on Thursday, March 7th, in the Student Services Center, room 3245. The forum will allow the college community an opportunity to meet the candidates and learn about their positions. All candidates will share their platform statements and take part in a question and answer session. So the Student Leadership Forum is basically an opportunity for the candidates who are running for officer positions in SLC to come out and kind of communicate their values, um, maybe their goals for their term that they're, you know, they're running for these positions, so they want to communicate to the student body what their goals are in their term. Voting will be done online at chaplife.cod.edu and more information about the candidates and elections. Contact the Office of Student Life 
at 630-942-2243. And Courier TV will be airing the Student Leadership Council Candidate Forum starting Monday, March 11th on our Facebook and YouTube page at Courier TV. The College of DuPage Meteorology Program weather program is making its way across the 502 community. In Roselle, Lake Park High School is the first high school in the Community College District 502 to use College of DuPage's Meteorology Program campus weather. The college is working with the other area high schools to get their pages up and running, including Community High School District 99 in Downers Grove. We thought that it would be important to try to get people in our own district to be weather aware. And so what we've started is a pilot program to give data that's tailored to each high school of District 502. We have a couple of schools that we've already uh, started this program with, Lake Park High School and then Downers Grove South and North. And we would like to see all of the schools in District 502 take advantage of this. For more information, you can contact Professor Paul Cervaca at 630-942-2118. All new for the 2019 season, College of DuPage has unveiled its new media lab in the library. Students will be able to work on all different kinds of projects, from editing audio projects in the sound booth to edit videos and images for your classes. If you want to learn how to take better pictures, you can check out a camera, you can try out the software, and we're still happy to help you out with that, even if it's just for your own personal interest. Students will also be able to work with a real studio camera and screen where they can project a blue or green light for special effects. The lab is open from 7.30 a.m. to 10 p.m., located in the lower level of the library in SRC 2030. For more information, call 630-942-3085. Along the shore of Lake Michigan, you are sure to spot the influence of the city of Chicago. Photographer and College of DuPage student Tanya Lenina captured this influence in her exhibit alongside the lake. The photos capture the natural beauty of the lake while keeping the city's influence on the shoreline on display. Chicago is kind of a little bit, I would say, unique because um, once you cross the Lakeshore Drive, you just immediately, um, almost in the opposite world, uh, it's calm and it's peaceful and it's just the vast, you know, body of water of Lake Michigan. The photos are on display in the photography hall of the Mackinac Arts Center until March 8th. This and Lunia's other work can also be found on her website, www.tlphotography.com. There is music on the air and on campus every Friday afternoon this semester. We get you in the rhythm with the music department and their Music Friday performances. Music Fridays is a program the music department set up about five or six years ago. Every Friday at noon, we have some kind of program that deals with music at the college. Sometimes those are lectures, sometimes they're career talks, sometimes they're performances. But Fridays at noon in Mac 140, we've got a gathering of people who care something about music. What we're trying to do with Music Fridays is give people a, an idea of the whole world of music here at the college. I have to say that when I look at the Music Fridays we've produced so far, each one is so different it's hard to know, it's hard to know which ones would really be my favorites. But I will say that when we bring back alumni who perform, they sing, they play, they talk about their lives, that has a very special place in my heart and I think everyone's. You know, my favorite one was my student recital, I had one. Um, and I got to sing Words Fail from Dear Evan Hansen because I was doing it for my voice lesson. I absolutely love that song. We had, we had a, a, a group, an opera group, ca called the Fourth Coast Ensemble. I believe they're from Chicago. And um, um, yeah, so the, uh, it, was, it was my favorite because I'm trying to do a little bit of uh, that in my um, music career. At this point, we don't have a lot of changes in mind, but every week is different. So if we're putting on 15 programs a semester, they'll all be different from one another. A lot of different things going on and, uh, and I'm looking forward to all of them. Thank you for watching Courier TV News. We'll be back next week with a new edition of Inside COD. For everyone here at Courier TV News, I'm CJ Rosenstein. Have a great weekend.